Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we got a brand new bike. This is the C3 Strom Pro, and they have a non-pro version, which is a little bit cheaper than this one. Uh, the only difference on both models is just gonna be this battery right here. This is a 20 amp hour battery on the Pro, and this is the 52 volt system. And if you just look at the bike, it is absolutely gorgeous. And if you guys have been interested in this bike, you guys have probably seen many reviews out there already on it. They had an Indiegogo campaign last year, and now these bikes are pretty much shipping out and they fix some of the issues that people were complaining about, like the shifter on this side being upside down on the left-hand side. But they got a lot of stuff correct. This bike to me, I'll tell you guys right now, I have a Super 73 RX. Obviously it's on a 72 volt system and um, this bike is just fantastic out of the box. When I got my Super 73, I was so happy with it. And when I got this bike out of the box and rode it for the first time, I was absolutely in love with it. So this is a very good bike on the market. It's obviously like a motorcycle, cafe racer looking type of bike. Now it looks like it has a mid-drive motor, but it doesn't. It has a 750 watt rear motor in the back, but it has a peak of about 12 to 1400 watts. Um, their website had two different descriptions. One said 1400, the other one said 1200, so I don't know exactly which one it is. But anyways, the bike felt great when I was riding it. It gets up to speed, has an off-road mode. I actually hit 35 miles an hour on this bike, even though it's only rated for 32 miles an hour. That's fantastic. Um, you have a rear rack right here. A lot of people aren't gonna tell you about the rear rack, but you can put an extra battery rack on here and hold an extra battery. And then when you get to your destination, it's low, you can just swap it out. Just make sure you bring both keys and both batteries. You got turn signals up here. You got a nice headlight right here. You got a half twist throttle. I love how the displays are on this side for the turn signals. It makes it very comfortable. But um, since you guys can't really see the bike from that far, I wanna bring you in here with a camera like we always do. Let's go over this bike. We're definitely gonna talk about the pros and cons because I did get this bike for free but the company said I could say whatever the heck I want about it so let's get into it and check it out so let's start off in the rear of the bike and you're gonna see that we have a tail light right up top right here I like it because it's almost at the farthest end of the bike and it's very high up so people are gonna see you uh, missed opportunity I think would have been nice if they would have had some type of cool brake light right here um, I do like their logo right here but I feel like if they would have added something right there it'd been pretty cool and then we have your rear rack right here, which obviously you can put bags on the side, which they sell on their website. But I like the fact that they have these holes right here because then you can put an extra battery up here with a rail, and then you can just swap your batteries over and you can get twice as much range. Moving on down here, you have some stylish looking fenders. These are fenders that I've never really seen on a bike. You can kind of uh, take them off from this little uh, section right here. So you don't really have to remove this piece off of the bike if you wanna take the fenders off. And they aren't metal, they are plastic, so that definitely saves some weight because this bike is like 92 or 94 pounds. And the one thing I do like about this fender is look, it goes all the way to the front. So it covers the entire thing, so you're never gonna get splashed with anything while riding. Right down in there, you got a 750 watt Bafang motor, and you got an eight speed back here. And then you have a Shimano Altis derailleur. The only thing I notice if you have it in gear number one, that the chain comes very, very close to the rim and the tire up there and down here. And you're probably not gonna be in gear number one unless you're starting from a stop, but uh, just something to keep in mind that it might hit the tire. And then you have a nice big chain ring up front with standard cranks and standard pedals. You have the logo right behind there. And I like the fact that you do have bolts right here so you guys can put like a water bottle holder or whatever you put on your bike to hold your stuff. Moving on to the top, you have this little section right here that has air vents right behind the battery. Um, I thought the controller was gonna be right underneath the seat, but it's not. These air vents don't really go to anything. It's just more for looks. The only thing I don't like about them is the screws that they used. I'm not a big fan of those screws. It looks really cheap when you get real close up, but you're never gonna notice it when you're actually looking at the bike from a distance. And then if you can see underneath the bike, those vents, yeah, they go to nothing. They just look cool. So let's move on to the battery. Now we already said this is a 20 amp hour battery sitting right here if you do get the pro model. If you get the non-pro model, it's a little bit smaller. We all know that batteries on electric bikes, if you're not familiar, this is probably the most expensive thing that you're gonna have to upgrade or change on your bike if anything happens to this battery or if you want more range. So let's say for example, you don't wanna put a battery on this rack back here, right? Cause you don't want the extra weight. You don't wanna be willing the thing or anything like that or feel like all the weight's back there. Um, I'm curious to see if that 24 amp hour battery is gonna fit on here because that would be a nice upgrade to get an extra four amp hours. They do say you can get a range if you just use a throttle only at about, I think, 32 miles of range. But I will say for my type of riding, 
I get it anywhere from 26 to 28 miles on these bikes and I weigh about 160 to 165 pounds. But I could see, depending on the terrain, the people getting about 30 miles of range. But you will get around, I wanna say 70 miles of range if you use the lowest pedal assist on number one. But you're gonna be going pretty slow and you're gonna be pedaling the whole time. And I feel like a lot of people that are buying this bike aren't gonna be pedaling. But I mean, there are some of you out there. So let me show you how to take this battery off. Now you have to use the keys on this side. Once you unlock it, the keys have to come out because on the other side you have this bar right here and the keys will be sticking out so they will hit this. So you always have to take the key out or you will bend them. Um, taking the battery out isn't as easy as some bikes. It does slide out very nice, but you do have to be careful and not smash your fingers. So if you have big hands, it might be a little more difficult, but it's a little harder to get in and out than most bikes, but that's how you do it. And if you guys want any information on this battery, there you go if it's focusing in on that so you guys can see the specs of it. All right, now what I'm excited for, let's see if this other battery fits. We're not gonna be using this for our riding test, but I just wanted to see if it would fit in general. Oh, nope, it don't fit. Okay, so you're definitely not upgrading that battery to a slightly bigger one, it doesn't fit. But that's not the company's fault. It's just something I wanted to try, but let's get back into reviewing this bike. So moving on to the front of the bike, you are going to have a serial number down there on the frame, and then you're gonna have nice suspension up in the front, and you have a fender right here, which is different from a lot of other fenders on electric bikes. I do like the design of it. It kind of goes with that motorcycle look they're going for. You do not have any headlight right here, which most bikes have. You have a nice big headlight right up front, and you got these nice sequential turn signals right here, which are blacked out. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now let's talk about these rims really quick. You obviously notice they have a really cool look to them. They're going for that motorcycle type of style we've been talking about. And these are mag wheels from Bafang. They even have a Bafang logo right there. And these things are fantastic. There's gonna be no maintenance for any like spoke tightening or anything like that, which is super nice. I mean, hopefully you never bend them in any way because if you do get a bend in it, you will have to replace the whole entire wheel. But I really think that's gonna be highly unlikely. You do have some very nice, big, fat tires. These are 20 by 4.25, so not 20 by four. They're 20 by 4.25 but they're not 4.5 like a Super 73 is. These are probably gonna be hands down my favorite tire that I've ever seen on an e-bike. These are motorcycle grade tires. They are very thick, so if you're not seeing this in person and you haven't seen one of these bikes, I'll tell you right now, you just gotta take my word for it. These things are thick. I think the only thing that's gonna make these things go flat is gonna be a straight up nail or maybe some big piece of glass, but I think you're gonna be okay with not getting flats on this bike. Moving on up here, you got some hydraulic brakes on both sides, and then you're gonna see the cable management. It's not too bad. I might add a few uh, zip ties just to kind of clean these up just a little tiny bit more. Um, very nice look though. Everything's hidden basically behind the headlight, which the headlight again is very nice. Has a C3 Strom logo right at the top. This is a motorcycle grade headlight. I did notice that the beam is more straight. It didn't look very wide, but we will get a night riding video one of these days, and you guys can see that. And here is a look of the other side of the bike. Looks basically the same. The only thing you're gonna notice is that uh, you have your little indicator for your battery right here. And then the key for this is gonna be over here. And then it's gonna look like it has a mid drive like we talked about, but I believe that's where the controller goes. Up top, I was wondering what this bolt went to and I believe it's for a cup. So if you guys have any type of cups that you get from like a bicycle shop, the cup would go right on top. The bolt would go right through the middle of the bottom of the cup. And then you can have your little drink, you know, sit like right here. So that's pretty cool. And the logo is nice. Um, these do not come off. These are like painted on here. So uh, you can't take none of this stuff off. And before I sit on the bike and show you guys the display, I will say that this seat is uh, phenomenal. Um, probably one of the best seats that I have sat on. It does have a lot of room right here because it has that little angle that goes down and comes up. So you have a lot of cushion to sit on the bike right here. Now that we're sitting on the bike, this is how it's gonna look. And on to this side, I did put a mirror on the bike. Now to put a mirror on this bike, all you have to do is pop a bar in cap off. That's all you have to do. And then you can slide a mirror in and tighten it up. You do have some nice grips. I have noticed that mine did come a little tiny bit loose, but they are locking. So I'll just lock this and we should be good on that. You do have your shifter right here, which I said they fixed. So you can see the numbers. They actually go in order now instead of being upside down. I can understand why people are complaining about that because normally this shifter 
was supposed to be on this side, so they had it put it upside down because they didn't have the left side shifter. But now they do, they fix that issue. And then you have your uh, button layout right here. So you got your, you can get into your settings if you hold this. And then you have your plus and minus to go through your pedal assist modes. And then you have your on off button. So if you hold this, your display comes on. Gorgeous, it looks all digital. And one thing I'm gonna tell you guys right off the bat, which I love about this bike, it already started off in my last uh, mode. So it has a memory mode on there. So whatever mode you left off at, it starts at the highest one. Now I know a lot of people are probably gonna say that's not a good idea because if someone else gets on it and they hit it, they're not gonna be used to it. But if you know the bike and you have someone ride it, just change it down to uh, number one. But I actually like that because I always ride fast and I always have to get on my bikes and I always have to go like this to get them always to level five. Now one thing that I did like about this bike is that um, you guys can go down to assist number zero and then the throttle will not work. So that's nice if you wanna keep your bike on with your headlight on and then your bike won't move just in case someone messes with it. But I do like that it says assist on zero and then you go into eco on one, two, and then three is stand, well, I'm, I'm assuming standard and then four is stand, and then five is turbo mode, which is pretty cool because I wanna be in turbo mode all the time, and I like the fact it just says turbo. And as I hold the camera here for a while, you're gonna notice that it keeps switching from uh, like speed max, and then it goes to other settings, your average speed. I like the fact that it just kinda cycles through some settings on the display, that's super nice. Now moving on to this side, you have your headlight button right here. I never thought I would like a headlight switch and a turn signal on the right hand side, but honestly, it is so nice to have it on this side. It's very comfortable. You have your horn right here, which a lot of people say it is loud and it is decently loud. It's coming from the headlight, but I will say I would have liked to have seen an actual horn on this bike because it is a motorcycle looking type of moped style, e-bike, whatever you want to call it. I would have liked to seen an actual horn on there like a Super 73 does with their bikes. And to finish off up here, you do have a half twist throttle, which is super nice. I will say it is slightly bigger than the grip, so it might feel a little bit weird to some people because it does feel like it's very shallow here and then very raised up right here. So I don't have my hand all the way up here. I have it kind of towards the end because it feels more comfortable that way. Your mileage might vary depending on your hand size. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention just now is that the negative button on the switch up here, if you hold it down, it will go into a walking mode. So the bike will sit and walk next to you and it will deactivate once you hit the brakes. So I turned off all the lights in the garage. All we have is this little garage light right here. And uh, here is how the brake light looks. This is without the brakes being pushed. And when you do hit the brakes, they get brighter. That's what I like to see on an electric bike. So you can let people know that you're braking doesn't flash like some other bikes, but that's my personal preference on what I like. And then you come up here, you're gonna see that it looks like the headlight is on and already flashing some light, but that's just a daytime running light. So if we get in here, that's just the outside ring, which is super cool. If you wanna turn the headlights on, which you can also change the setting in the app. And yes, this bike comes with an app, which uh, we need to show you one of these days. But uh, to turn the headlight on, you hit this button and you're gonna see on the display, See how it uh, pops up like that and then the headlight comes on. That's how you get your headlights on and then you have your high and low beam right here, which is super cool. And that's kind of how the, the headlight looks. But other than that, I think we spent a lot of time in this garage. I really wanted to go over this bike with you and show you guys some of the pros and cons that people probably aren't showing you or maybe give you a little bit more detail with my camera and just kind of go over some stuff. Cause I do stuff different than most people, but now let me switch over to the GoPro and my safety gear and let's get on the way and go ride it and see what this bike's all about. All right guys, so we're out here and I apologize for the wind right off the bat. Um, I had to close my visor just because it's been rough the last couple days. It's been raining for like the past week in California and now it's just windy as hell. We got freeze warnings, but uh, I gotta get this video done. So we're out here riding. We're going against the wind right now, so uh, we're still hitting about 27, 28 miles per hour on this bike. This isn't showing the best of the best. I've hit 35 miles an hour on this bike before, and it felt fantastic. Now, when you do get this bike, it's only going to go 28 miles per hour. You're going to be wondering, how do you get it to go faster? Well, they have an app that you can download on your iPhone or Android. It's the C3 Strom app, and then you can go in there and unlock uh, off-road mode. Now they do say if you're going to use off-road mode that it is, you know, you got to check with your local city and regulations. I understand that. We don't care around here. Now check this out. 
we're not going against the wind anymore we're getting blocked by these walls and uh 33 miles per hour right now and this thing is accurate but holy crap i almost <laughs> almost got blown off the the bike path because of how bad it is i feel like i got a pedal on this bike because everyone keeps looking at me weird like i'm doing something wrong <laughs> oh man awesome looking bike though so if you guys don't follow the channel you guys know what we always do right here and that's a speed test so we're going to get into the speed test hopefully it's not too windy on this run we're not going to use the pedals whatsoever we'll do this a second time up there and we'll actually use the pedals so one two three let's go i love the fact that it does still get up to speed i'm not saying this bike is slow at all but it's just nice and smooth like the throttle's nice and smooth, there's no problems. We're doing 25, 26, and uh, we're gonna run out of road. But hey, we hit a, uh, we just hit like 27.6 before we got to this thing. So not too bad. Now let's try it with the pedals. I'm actually really curious to see how it's gonna be with the pedals from a dead stop, because some bikes uh, take a little bit of movement to get going, so I always use a throttle to start off with. But we're not gonna use a throttle at all. I am gonna keep my hand off the throttle, so go. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. I, I got a shift though, because we're in the lowest, uh, lowest gear. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Number eight on the shifter. This feels fantastic. I don't feel like I'm ghost pedaling at all. I actually have a little bit of resistance. That huge chain ring we were talking about, that's nice. Now we're going against the wind a little bit, but we were hitting like 30 miles an hour. That motorcycle guy was looking at us too. I'm telling you, man, all the motorcycle guys are like checking us out. <laughs> this is like a magnet for like people wondering like what this is. Now, one thing you guys might have noticed if you can hear it over the wind noise is uh, the motor is loud. It's not quiet like most bikes. It definitely reminds me of an Aerial Rider Grizzly with the dual motors. It's definitely loud. Um, it's still not going to affect your riding in any way whatsoever. This is not a gas vehicle, but um, it's not completely silent. So if you want a completely silent bike, then you might want to look elsewhere. Now, this is how the bike looks out in the sun. Absolutely gorgeous looking. A few things I didn't even talk about when we were in the garage is that this has uh, four piston brake calibers on it, so it stops phenomenally, which we'll do the brake test in a second. I just wanted to pull over and just kind of admire the bike, you know, just kind of look at it. I really hate to get this thing muddy off-roading, but I just feel like we're going to have to do it. So let's take this bike off-road and see how it does and then get into the brake test. All right, here we go. Off-roading. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's in assist zero. Make sure you put it in five. <laughs> I swear, that's a good safety thing, man. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. All right, let's see how this is with no rear suspension. Let's go as fast as we can. I'm not worried about anything getting on us because those fenders cover all of the tires, which are super nice. I'm not seeing anything fly off from the tires at all. This isn't like the best bike I felt off-roading because there is no rear suspension. It's a hardtail, but the seat makes up for it. The best way I can describe this bike off-roading is uh, your hands feel very bumpy on the bike because there's no rear suspension. So you kind of feel the bike going like everywhere. So you feel it like in your hands and your arms and everything like that, but on the seat, that takes all the vibration out of the bike. I feel nothing in the back, even though it has no suspension back there. It's very weird, uh, but it's so comfortable. Whatever they put in the seat is just fantastic. It's like I upgraded my seat with someone that I paid $300 for to get like a nice uh, memory foam seat. I'm very impressed with it. These tires feel so nice on the road also because they're made for street. They're not really made for what we just went through. I'm really curious to see how the braking is now with these tires and the four piston caliber. So let's stop right off on, on this thing right here. One, two, three, go. Whoa, holy crap. What? Dude, we're only like, we're only like a couple feet from that. Normally when we do these tests, we're like way up there. Whoa. If this is how upgraded brakes would be like if I replaced them on my Super 73, I need to do it immediately. That was probably the best brakes ever on a bike. Even my Suron that I upgraded my brakes. Like, 
that was insane. I gotta do that again. I gotta do it again. All right, let's get up the speed. We're gonna do it at the exact same thing. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, go! Woo! <laughs> oh, man! Oh, that's insane! I was trying not to push the brakes too hard to slide because I don't want to mess up these tires at all. I'm not someone that does burnouts or anything like that. We're, we're not that far from that. That's where I braked. You can see the line coming too. That, that's insane. Absolutely insane. That's a very good job for this bike. So uh, if you want a bike with badass brakes, holy shit, man. That is fantastic. And a real quick update. I have went four miles on this trip. I've actually done five miles on the bike total since I charged it. So I have to go out the five miles because I didn't charge it uh, once I started riding. I only charged it, took it up and down the street to test it, did my review video. So five miles on the bike. We've went down uh, one battery bar out of five. So we have four left. All right, so now that we're coming this way with the wind, I really want to see what our top speed is going to be. So let's just hit it out. We are going to go down a little bit of a incline right here with the wind helping us ever so slightly. But let's see what we get. Come on, maybe 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. I'll pedal just in case it helps. Come on, where's 35 at? I've hit 35. Oh, all right, so it's only giving us 34. I mean, that's still phenomenal. I think the reason why I hit 35 the other day was because I was at a full battery charge. Oh, came in there a little hot, I forgot. We don't have all train tires on this thing, man. I almost slipped out. So definitely be careful if you're gonna ride this bike on some dirt and all that kind of stuff. You can always switch out the tires, but I'm gonna 100% tell you guys not to. These are some of the best tires I've seen on an electric bike. And we're doing 32, 33 miles an hour in the dirt. It's pretty smooth for the most part, some bumps here and there, but it's taken like a champ. One thing I do gotta mention, and it's the fact that uh, because I told you this grip is so small and then the throttle is so much bigger than the grip depending on your hand size, my hand is already actually hurting holding this the whole entire time. Um, that's why I kind of prefer thumb throttles, but they wouldn't have been able to fit a thumb throttle on this side because you know you have your headlight switch and your turn signal and your horn button right there. So that's that wouldn't have worked. Even if they put it on this side, it would have been in the way with the brakes. They would have had to slide the brakes more over and you could have done it on this side, but I do like the thumb throttle on this side. I don't mind a half throttle. I just feel like these grips need to be ever so slightly thicker to feel a little bit more comfortable. But now what I want to do on this bike is I want to use the pedal assist and I want to see how responsive it is when uh, we use it to get up to speed. Now, obviously using it at a standstill, it's a little hard because I'm in a very high gear and you have to rotate the cranks at least like a half a turn, but let's see how fast they activate. Oh, that, that's pretty quick. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, that's very responsive. That's nice. Another thing I also didn't point out that I wanted to adjust when I was going off road is that this bike does have a preload adjustment on this side. And then you have your compression right here. Preload is going to be great depending on your weight. So you don't have any sag on the bike when you sit on it. And I felt like a little bit of sag when I first got on the bike, so mine needs to be turned up just ever so slightly. God, man, we're, we're moving. I love the top speed that we're doing. Please don't, please don't come out in front of me. God dang it, man, we almost died. <laughs> I need to have the headlight on and the headlight's not on. We need to be able to be seen. But going back to the suspension real quick, I love the fact that you have those adjustments even though once you set it, you're done with it. You won't ever have to adjust it again unless you gain weight or lose weight. The only time it's ever gonna probably be adjusted is if someone else rides your bike. So my only biggest complaints about this bike is gonna be that it has no rear suspension. Now, I know I said it didn't need rear suspension, but it would have been hella nice to have rear suspension. Um, I love the wheels. I love the look of it. It's definitely different than most e-bikes out there But I will say that's what a lot of the weight is coming from these wheels are not light compared to uh, Spoked wheels, so that's what's making this bike over like 90 something pounds 
if you guys want a lighter bike then you're gonna have to get something totally different i think it's okay once you're riding it the 750 watt motor does push this bike along very well but i would have liked to see this bike at about like 80 pounds or so instead of over 90. another con on this bike and maybe a lot of people might not think it is because you're not going to mess with it too much on this bike but that's going to be removing the battery now if you're someone like me i'm never going to take this battery off i'm always going to charge the bike with the battery on the bike it's not going to worry me but if you're someone that live somewhere where you need to take your battery off and charge it in your house taking this battery off is not as easy as most e-bikes out there it's really not difficult but it's a little bit of an inconvenience the way it's set up but i don't mind it but i just want to let you guys know that it might be an inconvenience to some of you guys another thing too you guys got to worry about is if you're a tall rider um, as i'm pedaling my feet come up very high up to my chest it feels comfortable to me but i've noticed that riding this bike compared to other e-bikes is uh, my feet come up a lot higher than most e-bikes I've been on. So if you're over probably six foot, cause I'm 5'10", you might have an issue pedaling this bike. But the fact is, I don't think a lot of people are gonna pedal this bike. I feel like a lot of us that buy this bike are just gonna use throttle only. And quick update, we have done 10 miles and we went down another battery bar. So what I'm starting to notice is every five miles we do, we're going down one battery bar. And if that's the case, and that means we would run out of battery in about 25 miles, which puts us at what I was saying I normally get on bikes. I get about 26 to 28 miles of range. It's definitely a heavy bike, even though it has a 20 amp hour battery on it. So just consider that you might want to put an extra battery on the back rear rack, which comes with the bike. And then you can just swap it out when you get to your uh, location, which that's what I would do. But maybe I can have a company uh, give me a splitter cable and I could hook up both in parallel and then we'll have two batteries running like side by side. Oh my God, that's a big ass pothole. I'm glad I saw that. Holy moly. All right, so we're back at the house and all I can really say about it is the pros outweigh any of the small little cons that I talked about. And honestly, my cons aren't even big cons. The suspension might be the biggest con on this bike, but all the other stuff I talked about I was trying to find stuff to talk about this bike on maybe why you might want to buy it. And it's so hard for me to find reasons why not to buy this bike. Uh, maybe one of the biggest reasons might be the price. I mean, the price is expensive. You're looking at like 2,700 bucks. It's not on that Indiegogo campaign anymore, which it was under like $2,000 at one point in time. So if you guys got this bike at that price, you guys got a stealer deal on it because this is a phenomenal bike. If I had the choice between the Super 73 and this bike, and I was not gonna upgrade the Super 73, 100% I would take this bike over the Super 73. The only reason why I would take the Super 73 over this bike is if I was gonna do a 72 volt system on that because there is a huge community of people that work on the Super 73. There's a lot of people like me that show you how to put these kits together and make them go super fast. There's no information on this bike to make it go faster, which doesn't mean you can't do that to this bike, but there's not a huge upgrade path for this bike. So I feel like if you're gonna buy a bike outright and you're not gonna modify anything and you just wanna get out there and ride and you want a badass bike that looks like a motorcycle and has all these cool features on it, this is a phenomenal bike. Stay tuned to the channel, subscribe, because I'm gonna take it to work. We're gonna see how the brake light and the headlight look, and we're just gonna see how it is to commute back and forth. And I really appreciate you guys watching this video. I know it was a very long one. We spent a lot of time on the bike, but that's just because this is badass. This bike is awesome. And I'm trying to make sure you guys understand that over video because you don't see the bike in person, but it is my top e-bike I think I have in this garage right now. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.